maybe maybe this number one jersey thing is helping UNC on the court. Their recruiting efforts have drastically changed. Their their success, yeah, not their efforts. I mean, we saw this year and Kobe and Recon come this year. Next year, we already have Armando Bacot, and he is working tirelessly recruiting. He wants to go after three other big-time prospects, two of them five stars. Two of them are his teammates at IMG Academy. He posted on Instagram. It was like a fake magazine cover that was like that said, IMG's big three ready to make splash in Chapel Hill. It was Armando Bacot along with number eight overall, shooting guard Josh Green, number eight out of all players, not just shooting guards, and then Jeremiah Robinson Earl, power forward, 6'9", number 38 overall player, four-star. And he also went after Cole Anthony on social media, who's the number two overall player, number one point guard in the class. So the question becomes, is UNC's back to its national prominence with their latest recruiting? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think so. I mean... We all want to talk about the monstrous recruiting class that Duke had. While it was just stupendous how they got the top three players in the country, um, UNC nabbed Nasir Little, who I think is the going to be the best college basketball player next year, like in my opinion. And then we got Kobe White, who is a flat out scorer, and he's going to take. He's there. Those two are going to take the country by storm, and then. Raycon Black, who's basically kind of an upgrade of Theo Pinson, a guy who's long, who can handle the ball, who can distribute. I think, and then this, uh, getting Armando is just further evidence that the, the rust is starting to get grinded off of the stagnant recruiting that we've had for the past several years from all the scandals. But I mean, now what we're, we're that's behind us. We're we're ready to go, and I think uh, Josh Green and Robinson Earl, if they were to come with Armando, I mean. The immediate chemistry between those three would just be, it would it would it would be just electric. I don't I I would love to see that. But um, yeah, I think we're definitely moving forward in recruiting. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's it's here to stay. Quite frankly, as long as we can stay out of the news. Yeah, I mean, talk about the leg up. I mean, college basketball now. The trend is you bring in these one and dones, and then they're gone to the NBA. But if you can already bring in one and dones that played high school basketball together, that is just an huge, an immense advantage for Roy Williams, who's already arguably the best coach in college basketball to work with these guys. He has a huge head start, and it seems likely, like, I, to post an Instagram with that story, with, you know, with that what the, with that image. <laughs> so, <laughs> that I'm looking thing. for the word there, but, you know, that, that seems like it's very likely. It's their friends, like, why wouldn't three buddies want to go to college basketball and play on the biggest spotlight? in the country at Chapel Hill. So that's really exciting if you can get those. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get Cole Anthony. There's a lot of teams vying for him. I, I Duke doubt it. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's going to be Duke, Kentucky, a lot of other guys. You know, doesn't seem super likely, but I think the two guys, Josh Green, number eight overall, and Robinson Earl, so number 38. So what this means is you're, you're seeing just a lot more interest. Like every single big recruit UNC is interested in, and they have interest in UNC. You know, we're not going to land. I, I don't think we're going to land as many as Duke and Kentucky, but we're going to be close, and that's all that Roy needs. I mean, Roy's been winning national championships the last few years without great, you know, top five recruits in the country. I think mm-hmm. the last one was really Harrison Barnes before Nazir Little came, and we've won a national championship then. With two. We've won, haven't, haven't we won two since we've gotten there? Yeah. Well, we, got, we got one while Harrison yeah, yeah, but that that's included. Yeah. yeah, but so I mean, he still won one cent. That's a lot better. I mean, UNC is going to have to stay. They're going to have to stay up to par with everyone else recruiting because Duke is now the new Kentucky. They've already surpassed Cal Perry. They're they're yeah, embracing, we haven't heard much of Cal Perry. They're, they're embracing the one and done mold. They're already going full steam ahead for it. So if UNC wants to be able to compete, we've got to go after these guys who may end up being one-and-done type of players, but who cares? I mean, we've got if we want to be able to compete with Duke, we have to go yeah, after and I, and I think Roy is going to sprinkle in these one-and-done players, whereas Duke and Kentucky, you know, They're only you're not going to be shocked to see an entirely new starting five. You're not going to see that with Roy, but what he's going to do is sprinkle in these ultra-talented guys, these Nazir Littles, to come in. Maybe you get two years out of them, probably just one, but they're going to be really good cerebral players that hopefully will be able to pick up the system quick 
and be able to hit stride in January the spotlight's only once so the conference big, so plays. I think the spotlight, yeah. it's, it, it, all five guys can't be on the spotlight, honestly. And and you're not going to have seasons like last year. Or, you know, last year's team, I think they're cohesive and they, they played well at times. But there was a lot of, you know, downtime. I so think they went the chemistry through a lot was good, things. but the talent wasn't necessarily on par with the teammate chemistry that we had. Yeah, they just, I mean, you know, Joel Berry is great and all, but when he's your number one guy, it's tough. And you're not going to have, I mean, the, the, the difference in talent between Joel Berry and Nazir, like, you're going to have Nazir now. You're going to have Armando. You're going to have Kobe and Recon. Like, Recon is an ultra-talented guy. Tall, but plays point guard. Like, he is what the new he's NBA the mod- is. He's the modern point guard. And he's you, the modern you have, I mean, Joel Berry was a six-foot, undersized, good shooter, not very athletic. I've said this before. I think this draft class is just an upgrade of yeah, I mean, the past one with uh, Justin Jackson, Theo Pinson, and Joel Berry. I mean, these are just guys who play the same positions. They're just they're just better. And it's going to yeah. take a lot of pressure off of guys like Kenny, who can just worry about spot-up shooting, and Cam, who can just worry about just spot-up shooting. Luke May doesn't have to be in the post all day and just get his stuff swatted to the stands every time. You don't have to rely on Luke May to be your number two guy. (laughs) I think Luke May is a great player. I'm not throwing any shade. I'm just saying the guy's 6'8 and going up against seven-footers. You you tell me. You do the math and tell me how that's going to work out. I mean, I I, I think if you go to UNC right now, you should be just – so excited, unbelievably excited wait. for I the can't future. Wait to watch this. Um, the next, you know, the next two years for me and the next three years for David. If, if we're not in the Final Four, maybe two Final Fours, I will be shocked because the talent is there for Roy Williams, and he coached so well, made so many Final Fours, two national championship games without a lot of talent. Now he is top tier talent, and he has those other guys that can fill roles and play good basketball. So if you're a Tar Heel, you should be really excited.